tell your neighbor, I have come to be blessed here. And I, I will not accept anything else. I can't hear you. Neighbor, I have come to be blessed. And I will not accept anything else. Now open in your Bibles with me to Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 12. This scripture, I mean, I am trusting God that it won't be long before you commit it to your mind. So you can, you can just read it offhand. Amen? You can read it offhand. It should be something you should memorize. It's something you should be, you know, confessing in your cars. It's something you should be declaring in your prayers every day. It's something you sh it should be part of your life. Jeremiah 31 verse 12. Therefore, they shall come. Read with me now. Come on. Want to go? Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the head and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Tell your neighbor, sorrow has ceased in your life. I prophesy over you that everything that will bring sorrow to your life, the Lord shall destroy by fire this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, staying at a particular level is dangerous for anyone's faith. It's dangerous. Consequently, you are under divine mandate. Someone say divine mandate. To take new heights this year. And we have mentioned that there are how many heights? Twelve particular heights that God wants you and I to assess at new levels this year. Is someone hear what I'm saying? We mentioned that these heights are of different nature for different folks. Nevertheless, God wants you and I to be at liberty to assess several or all of them this year. Amen? Just to remind you, and those of us that were not here during the crossover, just to bring you in. We said these heights are heights of authority, heights of affection, heights of influence, heights of understanding, heights of sacrifice, heights of greater grace, heights of nobler accomplishments, heights of patience, heights of obedience, heights of kingdom power, heights of wisdom, and heights of impact. And this morning, we kick off with the heights of authority. And in this month, we will break it down for you. Amen? 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 We will break it down for you. So you understand exactly what it is you're doing. And you do it well. Tell your neighbor, I shall do it well. Now, before sharing with you what you require to assess new heights of authority, it is key that we have a common understanding of what we mean by authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke 10, 19, the Lord says, Look, I have given on to you authority over all. How many? How many? The power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. That's the new living translation. Nothing will what? Injure you. The concept, beloved, of authority, understand it, is closely connected in the scriptures with the concept of power. The Greek words for both concepts are exousia for authority and dunamis for power. Talking about dunamis as power, it occurs some 118 times in the New Testament. How many times? 118. That's indicative of something. That no Christian can truly function in the Christian life without power. A powerless Christian is a useless Christian. 
to himself, to society, and to the kingdom of God. Are we talking here? Let me touch your neighbor, neighbor. You cannot but come into power. No, that, that, that is not well done. Tell your neighbor, 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 neighbor. You cannot but come into power. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Dunamis. Power. Might. Strength of force. And you know, in the scriptures, it's often rendered in the plural. Referring to miracles. The Lord shall bring you into certain miracles your heart has been yearning for this year. I said the Lord shall work some miracles in your life that will shut down the mouths of them that do not believe in your God. This year in the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen to me child of God. When you see dunamis power, might, strength, force Often scripture uses that word to refer to miracles. Sometimes it uses that word to refer to supernatural beings. And can also refer to earthly rulers. To men that exercise power. Or to armies in the human realm. Are you still with me? Exusia, on the other hand, beloved, focuses on the right to use power. The right to deploy power. Rather than on the power itself. Now, exusia in the New Testament is mentioned a hundred and eight times. How many times? And you know, it always relates to people. Someone says it always relates to people. It means the right to assert power. Whether in legal, in political, in social, or moral ways, in the human world, or in the spiritual realm. I'm bringing these things out early so you understand that as a believer, it is key, very crucial. Hello? That whatever authority we have should never suffer limitation. Your authority must not be limited only to spiritual things. I know us, we are Pentecostals. And we've been so taught spiritual authority. So we think that everything is spiritual. Hey! Things are first spiritual, but they function in the natural. Someone says so, natural, natural. Your spiritual power must speak in the natural. In the realms, you can't make impact. So when you get into the realms, bring it down. Tell anybody, but bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. This is where impact is made. Hello? We must have that understanding so that we don't join the group that say, you know, it's just spiritual. No, we, we have demarcated it for too long. We are spiritual beings living in the world. Let the world feel us. Neighbor, tell your neighbor, 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 neighbor. This year, the world shall feel you. I can't hear you now. Neighbor, 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 neighbor. This year, the world shall feel you in the name of the Lord Jesus. But we need to understand, beloved, that whatever authority we have flows from the work of Christ. In the beginnings, let's get that clear. It flows from where? The work of Christ. We are therefore compelled. It's non-negotiable. Are you getting what I'm saying? To follow his model. Any authority that is desired to be operated outside the model of Christ will be a waste of time. For you as a child of God. 
It's okay for the world. But for you as a child of God, it will be what? A waste of time. What was the model of Jesus? He operated in the Holy Ghost. Nothing he did that he didn't do by the Holy Spirit. Hello? And he functioned in intimacy with the Father. Have you ever read in your Bible before that air in the morning, as the KJV will put it, while men are still sleeping, he's gone up to the mountain to be alone with the Father. No day opens for him without that connectivity strengthened. So those of us who think we can exercise authority, those of us who think that we can, you know, walk in authority without maintaining that model, we must change. This is the source of our frustrations. Prayer is not kill my enemies, Lord. Kill my enemies, Lord. Fall down and die. No. No! The falling down and die is as a result of with whom you are connected. Am I still talking here? A useless man who shakes his head from morning till night asking that his enemy should fall down and die will suffer from migraine. Arrange your, tell your name, arrange yourself. Get connected. It's not an option. We cannot do service here effectively as we're doing it without NEPA. And what we have done with NEPA is because we can't trust them, we have provided our own electricity. That's the generator working. There's diesel. All the things to make it happen. Are you, tell, are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> so if we do not arrange, you come here, you'll be frustrated to be hot in here, to be dark. You, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be shouting because these things won't work. But you see how easy it is when things are working together. Are, are, you, are you with me now? That's how it is. When your connectivity with the father is in top gear, I am telling you, Satan himself sees you as a terrorist. himself knows to look for your trouble from afar and quickly run away. Because if you catch him, he's in trouble. Is someone hear what I'm saying? That was Jesus' model. Listen to me, child of God. Our authority is our God-given right to receive and use the power of God which flows from the indwelling Holy Spirit both in the spiritual realm and in the human realm. That God giving authority to demonstrate his power, to deploy his power. Listen to me. We are dealing with a terrible enemy who does not fight by the rules of engagement. At night, when you are supposed to be sleeping, that's when he comes to attack your children. Who knows what I'm talking about? Why is it that children always get sick at night? The rules of engagement are that at night you should rest. But that's when he strikes. At night, when the hospitals are closed, when everywhere is quiet, your security is compromised. But in the midst of that attack, number one, you're confused. You're looking for your khaki, your carry handkerchief. Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, Lord, oh Lord, blood of Jesus. That, is that the time to call blood of Jesus? Blood of Jesus. You're praying in fear. Is someone tell you, you know, you know, prayer works when there's faith. Prayer is disaster when there's fear. Is someone here what I'm saying? So you are scattered. Your breath is, oh God, what am I going to do? Oh, 
and you carry the child to the hospital. The doctor on duty may not even be the doctor that is capable of handling that matter. He will just manage. He won't, the, the doctors, am I here? They won't tell you that this is not my area, but just do it. They know general, amen? So they manage until the man whose responsibility it is comes in the morning. You had lost sleep, your rest. By the following morning, you are worn out. But in authority, who is that making noise? Get out. I need to sleep now. Get out. You are not struggling. Hey, can't we take relax. Father, in the name of Jesus, let my sleep not be, you're not praying for the child, you're talking about your sleep. Let my, let my sleep not be disturbed now. I have an assignment to deliver tomorrow morning. Is someone hear what I'm saying? Now, now, that sort of life, then you know that you're making impact. And everybody's looking at you, are mad. We should rush this child to the hospital. Horse, tomorrow morning, we'll go when the doctor is there. Am I talking here? Not running like headless chickens because you're panicking. Hallelujah. Are you still with me here? Given that this authority is both spiritual and human, beloved, nothing says we are to limit ourselves only to the spiritual. I cannot but emphasize that. Hear me? Our mandate is to assess new heights of both spiritual and human authority, be it political, legal, or social. Listen to me, child of God. Listen to me. Politics is not for the dirty politicians. It's not for the cowboys from the village who stole enough money. It's for everybody whom God has called to that mountain of politics and governance. And you don't have to have money. Because in Nigeria we have made it that it's only a business for the money people. Because you spend so much money to go back to steal. It's for people with the call who have ideas to impact society. Am I talking here? Your Bible says it is God who lifts up one and brings down the order. It is your God. Not Shungo, not Ogun, not all those spirits that they go to sacrifice to. No! We've left it for them and we are in the four walls complaining. Hey, they are corrupt. Why wouldn't they be corrupt? They didn't go there as Christians. They went there as normal people. But when you have understanding that I am here as an ambassador for Christ, you won't join that corruption. Am I talking here? Because you know you'll give account. You're on assignment. You are on assignment. Your case will be different. I mean, in their numbers, they will gather to chop you. Tell them, please, I'm sorry. I'm not part of this. And you walk away. Because you know where your money is going to come from. Not through that TV. Am I still talking? Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, and God bless them. Tell your neighbor you're blessed. I can't hear you now. Prophesy to your neighbor, 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 neighbor. You carry God's empowerment. Now, the blessing we are talking about is not the car. The blessing we are talking about is not the house. It's not the, 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 the new job. It's not the promotion. The blessing we are talking about is the empowerment of God that rests upon you. That makes all of these things possible. We come to God for that blessing. We don't come to God for breakthrough. I hope you are ready to hear the truth this year. No, it's wrong to come to God for breakthrough when you can break through by the blessing that is upon your life. It's wrong to come to God to seek prosperity when you can prosper by reason of the unction upon your life. It's wrong to come to God to be lifted when you can be lifted by reason of his unction upon your life. When we fail to understand that, we put ourselves under frustration. Lord, you promised to prosper me. No, he has prospered you already because the blessing is upon you. Come on, so raise your hand like this. The blessing is upon me. You are blessed. You are blessed. I 
say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. You carry something. You carry something. Don't ever take yourself as ordinary. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, now, be fruitful. That's prosper. It's not his own to make us prosper. Tell your neighbor, it's your responsibility. It will happen. It will happen. I prophesy of you by the finger of God that is resting upon you. The things that have hindered your prosperity, they shall collapse before you as you deploy your authority in the earthly realms. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. What God has sent you to do, you call him to come and do for you, you will call him for a long time. You are to do it. But you just need to keep the blessing fresh. And subdue it. Did you see? And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Beloved, this mandate, though it was lost at the fall of man, has since been restored to us by Christ Jesus. Therefore, in him, we are at liberty to assess not just authority, but new heights every day of authority. Someone hear what I'm saying. How do I assess these new heights? To assess new heights of authority requires you to do among so many things, two major issues, to deal with two major issues. You must settle into your life two major characteristics. Are you still with me here? Number one, work on your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Someone say faithfulness. Someone say faithfulness. Our God is a good father. He's not just a God. He's a father. And a, 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 a good father at that. And so he takes us one step at a time. Listen to me. Until God finds you faithful in your present level of authority, your desire to assess new levels of authority will suffer much delay. So avoid the delay. Help me tell you about avoid the delay. In God's kingdom, beloved, only those who are found faithful in little things ever get put over much. That's how it works. So work on your faithfulness. Luke chapter 19, 12 to 26 clearly establishes that. I want you to go read it when you get there. But I'm going to tell you just in brief. A man, a rich man had servants. And he called three out of them and gave one ten pounds, another five pounds, and another he gave one pound. And he says to them, Occupy! Occupy! Be in charge! Till I return. Let your word be law. Don't take any fool as a prisoner. Remain dominant till I return. It's all yours until I'm back. He left. After a while, he came back. That blessing upon your life that you have failed to acknowledge, to deploy, to perform, you will give account one day. He hasn't gone forever. He will be back. And if he's not back to meet you, you will go to meet him there. And there is a day to give account. I wonder what you will do. They gathered to him. The man with the tent came and said, Master, I have made profit. I doubled the numbers. 
He said, well done. The one with the five came. Master. I doubled the numbers. He said, well done. The one with the one came. I said, you, I know you. Evil man. You sow. You reap where you don't sow. You get what you don't have. Me, I no go fall for you. Take your one pound. What was the master's word to the first and the second? Well done. Listen to me. The car. I just read on the internet the latest range. My range is out of fashion. It's all here what I'm saying. My range is what? Uh, the latest one. I said, hey. The car will be out of fashion. The house, my father lived. When we shared his property, I avoided it. You saw what I'm saying? I told them to give me the empty land. Let me build my own. So I didn't take the house. Because that's not the type of house I want to live in. You saw what I'm saying? I can't use my father's clothes. You saw what I'm saying? So time will render everything obsolete upon the face of the earth. And the only thing you're taking with you will be the record of what you have done with the blessing that is upon your life and what dimensions you ranged in it. And so he said to them, well done. That's the commendation. That's all we will get. And is that commendation, that commendation will determine which part of life you will stay. Some of you will be doing houseboys. I know it's better to be a houseboy. David says so. I'd rather be a gatekeeper in heaven. Uh, <laughs> it's better than to be in hell. So it's okay, but arrange that one. If that's all you want, arrange it now. It's only how I say. But I would like to come around and see you that you're in one mansion. Because Jesus said there are mansions in my father's house. And, and I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. So why will you miss your mansion? This one guy with one pound. The master said, oh, so you read me like that. I'm sorry to declare to you that you read me in error. If you knew that this is who I was, you should have at least given my one pound to the bankers. Upon my return, I will get an interest. But you didn't do that. Take that one pound from him. You will go and read that scripture. You will see that it's not only those three servants. There were many. Hello? There were many. So they were standing all around. And he asked those who are standing by him, take the one pound from him. And they protested because he said, give it to the man with 10. Jesus Christ. Hey! It's only Christians that I see complain. They are rich. They want to corner everything. It is scriptural. Hello? Read with me there. And they said unto him, Lord, he had 10 pounds. For I say unto you, he replied, that unto everyone which heart shall be given. To him that had shall be what? Giving. But to him that had not, from him that had not, even the little he had shall be what? I didn't say so. It's in your Bible. May that not be your portion. I say may that not be your portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my time is up. Beloved, until God can trust you, until God can trust your exercise of authority over little things. Listen to me. Even principalities and powers could be at liberty to refuse your desire to gain higher heights of authority. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? First secure God's trust in how you presently exercise the authority he has given to you and watch him lift you up without remedy.
your lifting will be without remedy. Did they God find you? Satan can't stop you. If Satan can't stop you, his demons can't stop you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Rise on your feet. Let's leave it there. Next Sunday, we will talk about the rest. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, open my eyes. Bring me understanding of how to use the authority I now have. Because you have authority. Authority in your home. Authority with your wife. Authority with your husband. Authority over your children. Authority amongst your friends. What authority God has given to you? What are you doing with it? Lord, open my eyes and grant me insight as to how I will deploy the authority I now have to gain your trust. Can you pray that prayer for yourself? Lord, grant me the wisdom to deploy the authority and I have to gain your trust. I want to pray in church this year. I want to pray in church. Can you negotiate with your father? Lord, help me. Help me. I don't want to be a waster anymore. I don't want to be a fritter anymore. I want to be able to demonstrate, deplore the authority you have given to me right now, no matter how small it may be, very effectively to, to secure your trust that I may go high. Let the spirit of faithfulness rest upon me. Let the spirit of faithfulness rest upon me. Let the spirit of faithfulness rest upon me. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Lift up your right hand. I declare over you. Every enemy of yours. That will by the spirit of unfaithfulness. Cause you not to be a man. That can obtain God's trust. I command the performance of that spirit. Upon your life to cease right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every force. Working against your faithfulness. I command it to collapse before you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God will find you faithful. God will find you a man or a woman that he can depend upon in the name of the Lord Jesus. May God count on you for where you are right now to make a difference in the name of the Lord Jesus. May God count on you for the people you deal with right now. That you'll be a difference maker in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May God count on you. That because you are here. Wherever you are. Change cannot but come forth. Change for the better. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you my father. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. Jesus much less name we pray.